powerful punch is added to the ground strafing by these new rocket-firing typhoons. Their deadly missiles have proved even more effective than dive bombing. The planes propel their charge at terrific speed. The rocket itself has much greater weight and penetrating power than any shell hitherto fired by fighter planes. An automatic camera records the deadly results of the new flying artillery, a wholly new kind of aerial warfare. Factories, marshalling yards, and ferries across the River Seine provide excellent targets. Rod Davidge, who flew Typhoons with RAF 146 Wing, 193 Squadron, talked about a great friend of his who was laid to rest here. I knew uh, Baker. He was a great friend of mine. And uh, we uh, partied a lot, and he was an excellent uh, beer drinker. And... Uh, he always liked the bitters, and I took the mild. <laughs> and uh, he uh, had a, a wonderful uh, record of uh, service. And uh, as you can see, he had the DSO, DFC, and Bar. And uh, he was shot down just uh, a little bit uh, west of Khan. Uh, we were uh, ordered to go down and uh, stop the uh, 91st, 95th Panzer Division from coming up from the south of France. And uh, we ran into heavy flak just coming in, but we thought we had sufficient height to uh, get over the flak, but uh, Baker got hit, and... Uh, the rest of us uh, were bounced around a little, and uh, he uh, called over the microphone that he'd been hit and was going down, and uh, that was uh, about the last. And uh, unfortunately, I was uh, more or less second in command, being the flight commander, and I can't quite recall the name of the... Uh, the bridge, and uh, we bombed and strafed the bridge, dive bombed and strafed the bridge and area, and there was considerable light flak and heavy flak after we left the bridge. And uh, I was flying, and I was thinking about uh, flying more or less straight so the uh, other fellows could... Uh, Formate and uh, in battle formation to come back to uh, to England to Needsor Point, and uh, that was a big mistake. Flying straight and level, if you veered right or left, you avoided a lot of uh, anti-aircraft gun. But I got hit and. Uh, 
uh, I think it was from uh, light flack and a shell we used to call uh, flaming onions. They came up and they were like burning softballs coming at you. And uh, anyway, I got hit and uh, I knew I was hit. I could see, uh, I thought it was smoke coming out of my right wing and left wing. And I switched the engines off because I knew possibly it would blow up if I didn't. So I switched the engines off, or the switches off on the engine, and we usually had it was dual ignition on them. I shut both switches off and uh, looked down to see where I was and told the boys I'd been hit. And uh, I was going to land on the beachhead in the sand. I thought that would be a good place to crash land, you know, without any obstructions. And I noticed that they were a building like an airfield down at one spot. And it looked like a heck of a good place to make a forced landing. So I just circled as much as I could with the height I had, I was enough to glide in and make a landing. And when I made this uh, uh, landing, I uh, made a hell of a pile of dust because it was an old wheat field that they were building, that they were building this airport on, air, airfield on. And uh, when the aircraft came to a halt, I put the hood back and I could uh, hear these uh, uh, soldiers saying, get the hell out of there, get down this hole here with us, or the trench. So I meandered, I got out and wasn't in any hurry because I was so shaken. And uh, so I got down in the, in the hole with them and then when the shelling stopped, I thought they were blasting or fixing something, you know, I didn't know it was enemy aircraft shelling the place. <laughs> and and uh, so I was going to come back by boat. I talked to the commander of the uh, unit, and he was giving me a chit, writing me out a chit to come back by boat. So uh, <coughs> uh, when I'd finished talking to him, I had my little note to get a ride back on the boat <laughs> and a guy comes up to me and he says uh, sir he says uh, we're servicing commandos and he says I think we can uh, patch up the holes in your aircraft and I said you can what and he says yeah we've got the, the material and uh, so they were very well trained uh, service commandos, and they they uh, so they patched up the holes in the aircraft, and uh, took most of the afternoon to patch up and and get ready for uh, hopefully a takeoff. And uh, it was just getting dusk, and I was able to uh, take off, and uh, about twenty minutes back in England.